Constitutional Conversations is a series of discussions by America's leading scholars about the principles, framing, ratification, and implementation of constitutional government in the United States. This series is hosted by the James Madison Memorial Fellowship Foundation of Alexandria, Virginia. There were basically three headwaters, if you will, of the mainstream of early American constitutionalism. The first was classical republicanism. There we mean Greece and Rome. Rome particularly of the republican period that lasted nearly 500 years. Then there was enlightenment liberalism. And there we mean uh, in particular British liberalism. And we think of figures such as John Locke and Algernon Sidney. Two men, by the way, whom Jefferson uh, pointed to by name as influences on his draft of the Declaration of Independence. And then that third stream, or head, headwater, if you will, of the mainstream is Christianity, Protestant Christianity in particular, and even further, uh, what we would call Reformed Christianity, meaning Calvinistic Christianity, those denominations who were descended from John Calvin. And religion played an important, even a vital role in forming early American constitutionalism. But that role was an informal one. The framers of our Constitution intentionally um, created a regime that would be religion blind, if you will. And there's a reason that uh, God, for example, doesn't appear in the Constitution as, as references to the deity do in the preceding uh, organic laws, such as the Declaration of Independence. So an informal role, one that uh, during the revolutionary period, for example, helped to provide arguments for resistance against tyrannical rulers. Um, and in particular, the founders were counting on religion to produce good Republican citizens, Republican with a small r, democratical citizens, if you will. And uh, George Washington probably said it best in his farewell address when he said that religion and morality are indispensable supports of Republican government. Again, religion played a vital role in bringing on the American Revolution. And here we can turn to John Adams for support. Adams, of course, was a leading revolutionary himself. And he said, looking back on that revolutionary period uh, at a distance of nearly 50 years, who will believe that the apprehension of episcopacy, the fear of bishops, in other words, helped to bring on the American Revolution. And he says, nevertheless, this is a fact as, as certain as any in history. And he went on to say, this is how religion affected the American Revolution. By the way, Adams defined the revolution as much more than just the war. He said, the revolution actually occurred years prior to fighting. And he said it was a revolution in the hearts and minds of the American people, a change in their religious sentiments, he said. Adams said, here is how Americans were thinking in that run-up to the, to the Revolutionary War. They were afraid that English bishops were going to be imposed on American churches. And that was a legitimate fear, by the way. And Adams said, this is how Americans started thinking. If England can impose bishops over our churches, then they can establish the entire hierarchy of the Church of England. They can start to forbid marriages and funerals if they're not done under the proper church auspices. They can make schism heresy, he said, and they can introduce this entire hierarchy. And so Adams was convinced that this fear of English episcopacy or bishoprics was a key factor in bringing on the revolution. And he said it caused Americans, both elites and common folk, to close constitutional thinking about their place in the empire. There is a marvelous cartoon that was published in 1768-69, and it shows Americans driving an English bishop from, America, from the American shores. And he's climbing up the rigging of a ship to return to Britain. And the Americans there are driving him away by throwing books at him. They also say things like, uh, no Lord spiritual or temporal in, Amer in New England. And that's sort of a play on the House of Lords, which had secular lords, but it also had uh, spiritual lords. The English bishops, bis bishops in the Church of England, got seats in the, uh, in the House of Lords. 
The books that these Americans, these New Englanders, are throwing at the English bishop are Locke on government, Sidney on government. Again, these are two people whom Thomas Jefferson pointed by name as influences on the Declaration of Independence. But the third one, the book that's open, that is about to strike the bishop in the back of the head, is Calvin's works. Calvin's works. So, although Jefferson left Calvin off of his list of people, he mentioned Aristotle and Cicero and Locke and Sidney as authors of books of public right who informed our Declaration of Independence, Calvin is there. And the author, the, the, rather the illustrator of this cartoon, captures that in this drawing. And it's a marvelous visual uh, kind of representation of these various streams, as I've referred to them, or headwaters that were at work during the Revolutionary period. Constitutional Conversations is made possible by a generous grant from the Fairley S. Dickinson, Jr. Foundation. Constitutional Conversations is made possible by the James Madison Education Fund.